Hello everyone, thanks again for joining on Sealed for Good. Today I am talking about the importance of surface preparation. Now we have covered this many, many, many moons ago, but it is always one that comes up for waterproofers and builders. And we're seeing now this highlight on waterproofing and inspectors and inspections happening. And why is it so important? Well, surface preparation is one of the three key things we talk about that are the most important in waterproofing. And that often those three things are surface preparation, surface preparation, and surface preparation. When you get this right, things flow on. And often jobs go wrong and they go back to the substrate. And when you look at the substrate, it may not be the substrate, but it's how it has been prepared. And surface preparation is not priming. It's not about priming. Surface preparation happens way before the stage of priming. It could be cleaning. It could be removing residues. It could be testing the substrate. It could be reinforcing the surface. Classic was the, the other week we had a job where they were using express lay and they were putting it on plywood flooring. Marine ply, all of the goods. However, the plywood had been only nailed. Now, it's always a good thing if you're going to tile on timber that the timber is screwed and glued. Now, you can't tell whether it's been glued into those joists, but you can take responsibility to making sure those timber sheets are screwed. That's part of the surface preparation before you start priming and laying your sheet down. And so in that situation there, we told the contractor, make sure you go and screw the timber down. Now, decisions like, I'm not gonna get paid for this, or it's a builder that won't pay for it, question whether you should be actually doing that work for that client, because if they're not respecting the application, you're inheriting it, and it's wrong. So ensure you understand that part, because surface preparation is key. It's the key that unlocks the door to success. The other part is, who's doing the surface preparation? I'm seeing and hearing a lot of this lately where contractors now trying to ensure they're competitive and they're assigning the surface preparation to not even one of their own staff members, but it's actually going out to another contractor or the builder. get his labourer to go out and prepare the surface. Now, you are putting lots of risk if you do that. It's one thing if you've trained them and ensured they've, they've checklist everything that you require, but you take high risk when the surface preparation is not part of your job. Now, if you understand that there might be some serious requirements to surface prepare, like concrete repair, for example, you could be on a remedial job and that concrete substrate or the surface needs some concrete repair, it could be chemical injection, it could be corrosion protection, it could be all sorts of work, and that may not be into your specialty. That is where you say to the builder or your client, this needs to be done by someone who's an expert in that area. But the surface you actually go onto, you should always prepare yourself and know how it's been done so you can be rest assured that once you get that primer on there and your membrane, it's your job, it's complete, and you can sign off knowing, hand on heart, you've done the right job and you're gonna get a successful outcome. If you want any help with surface preparation details on how to tackle it and some of the tips and hacks to make sure that you're getting it right, check out 1-800-650-435. You can call us on our website or check out the GAP courses because we spend lots of time on surface preparation with our GAP practitioners. Remember, hashtag GRIPSEDSUIT for good. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.